What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, what we're gonna be talking about is a multimeter. Now, this is a very handy tool. You don't have to be a mechanic or anything, but it comes in really handy if you're trying to diagnose a problem with your car or even checking the status of batteries. Very handy tool. We're gonna to be talking about two main functions that I use this for almost on a daily basis that really helps me out and I think it'll help you out too. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. That really helps me out. Hit that like button and let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so one of the first things I often use this for is to check the status of like a battery. So you can put it on volts. Um, you can also check like wall outlets to see if you have power. And you'll want to select, you know, DC is what cars and vehicles run off of. And then AC is what your house, uh, alternating current is what your house is running off of. So you'll have to switch it to AC if you're checking like a, a wall outlet or something. But oftentimes I'll check like the um, status of a battery. Now you might have a test light. Now this battery, you know, it'll light up the test light. And that's great just to see if you have current going. But the multimeter will show you the actual volts of the battery. All right, so we only got 8.5 volts. So this battery is very weak. It should have 12 or higher. And another good thing about that, you can also check uh, the condition of like AA, AAA batteries. You know, you might have a bunch of batteries uh, laying around and you don't know which one is charged, which one is dead. But you can also check the condition, you know, see which batteries are in good condition versus the ones that are weaker. For example, I have two AAA batteries here. This is a rechargeable one. Uh, so let's see. We've got 1.32 volts versus this Energizer lithium battery, 1.6. So we know this one has a lot more power than this one right now. Same thing for these two AA batteries. Uh, 1.29 versus 1.72. All right, so next up is uh, checking continuity. So this is very handy if you're just wanting to make sure that you're getting flow all the way through a wire. So for example, I'm gonna switch over here. Um, I'm gonna switch the function where you can hear it beep. And when you hear a beep, you'll know that you have a, a power is able to flow through a component or a wire. So we're getting continuity through this. So if we weren't, it could be a bad connection at one of these terminals or a broken wire inside. So that's just a very uh, quick way to check if you have um, flow through a, through a system. Now next up we have, these are two um, thermal fuses uh, in my dryer that recently went out. And this is the bad one. So when I was trying to figure out what was going on with my dryer, I was checking and I wasn't getting any continuity, so I knew this fuse was bad. And here's a good one. So I know I'm getting this, so I know this component is good, and this works out good if you, it's not like a regular fuse where you can see 
um, that it's burnt, you can't really tell, but you this is a way you could check to see if something's good. Now it also comes in handy if you're wanting to check like the status of like a switch. So we got like a little generic light switch here. So I can put my prong here and there. And then, so right now the switch is off. And I know this switch is working, All right? And it also works great for like little safety switches. Like this, for example. So I know this switch is good and it works good for like key switches and things like that. So right now I have a heating element that went bad in that same dryer. And while it was still in there, I couldn't see anything. So I, I was checking the continuity. So I knew it was bad. And the reason it wasn't getting is because it has a broken connection there. And another thing that I often use this for is if I'm wanting to check like a wiring harness on something, I can make sure that I'm getting, um, there's not like a break in the wire. You can just check to make sure that that harness is okay. So I have it hooked up to the uh, red wire on this side. So I know that's good. And then you'd also want to check your ground wire. So the ground is going to be just as important as the power. So I know that this harness is good for this clutch. So right here is a real life situation that happened just the other day. Uh, this Z910 came in. They were thinking they needed a new clutch. It uh, wasn't working. I was getting power back to this harness and I noticed that uh, burnt harness connector right there. So I was pretty confident it just needed a harness and that's a pretty common situation. Most people think it's either the clutch is bad or the PTO switch is bad. And a lot of times it's just a harness. So I went ahead and removed the clutch because I do like to check the bearings uh, while, I, while, I have, while I'm working on it. So I'm going to go ahead and test this wiring harness. And I've deleted the background noise. It was just a lot of noise in the background. So you're not going to be able to hear the beep. But I went to check one wire, uh, the positive wire, and I wasn't getting continuity on that wire. So I'm looking at it now. I'm not getting anything. And so then I checked the ground wire. The ground wire was good and ended up being that's all this one needed was a new wiring harness. The clutch was fine and the PTO switch was fine. So this is one way that this uh, multimeter can save you a lot of money where you're not wasting money on and time replacing expensive parts. And another mower I was working on recently, um, this one, it wasn't charging the battery, fairly new unit. And I'm ch I checked the stator, I checked the voltage regulator, everything was turning out good. Um, I was getting po power. So basically I started just tracing power going from the stator all the way up to the fuse block. And I was getting power up to the fuse and the fuse was good but I wasn't getting power on the other wire coming out of that fuse. And, you know, it was just a tricky thing. You just kind of, kind of follow along. You can use that voltmeter checking volt. I mean that multimeter checking the voltage as you go along. So I was getting power to that wire, but not that wire. And it was an easy fix. All I had to do was just crimp the terminals where they were getting a better connection on that fuse. So it was an easy fix. Just took a little bit of time to find. All right, so anytime you're working on something and um, you know you think like a starter or a switch has gone out, you always want to check to make sure you have a good ground. Um, it's just as important as the positive. Without that ground, it's not going to work. So uh, you can use your multimeter to check to make sure you have a good ground. Let me show you a demonstration here. I'm going to use this um, generator here. So if I came right here and it would, it will not start. First thing I'm going to do is check the battery. So I got it on 12 volts DC. I've already got the lead hooked up to the um, positive. And so it's not going to do anything until I need to have ground. So I know the battery is good. All right. So let's say I think it's the starter. Well, the starters are grounded to the engine frame. So the way to check, you know, the starters up here, but I'm just going to check 
touch the engine right here and I have nothing. All right, so first thing you'd wanna do in that case is start checking from the battery. First, uh, check that lead. That's usually the most common. It's just kind of a loose connection on the ground to the battery. And then start following that up. And as you can see here, I have no ground. So the, bat the, whole, the whole unit is not um, connected to the battery. In other, other words, the battery is completely disconnected uh, from the from the system And obviously I'm just using this as an example a lot of times, you know something, you know It could just be loose but a lot of times, you know if this thing's sitting here running and vibrating It could wiggle that bolt loose and it won't get a good ground And one thing that you can see is like if you ever see anything that looks burned it's because it's kind of arcing um, It'll also get corroded that can, can cause a lot of issues. I see that all the time so I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down and I'll show you how once I touch that ground to that engine frame, I'm going to get uh, the same amount of volts, the 12.94, I believe it was. So we got that tightened down. So got the battery hooked up. So again, we got 12.9 to the, from the battery, but watch where I touch here, still got it. Now I got it right here and I can even, for example, I can like the muffler will be grounded. So basically I'm just completing the ground uh, for the battery. So we'll come back over here. So we, now we, now we know that everything's grounded and now, now it'll crank up. So that's just another useful thing that you can use your multimeter to check your ground situation. And one other thing I'm going to mention while we're talking about batteries and ground and all that, anytime you go to replace a battery, um, you want to disconnect the ground first on the battery. And I'm going to show you why. So if I had a, uh, if I started to do the, the positive first and I were to take a wrench and I'm wrenching along and I'm touching it and it's going to arc, it's going to spark an arc if I have it, if I have the battery grounded, but once I undo that ground, the battery is pretty much disconnected uh, from the piece of equipment. So disconnect the ground first, and then that's, you basically have disconnected the battery from everything. So even if, when you go to do the positive terminal, you disconnect that one next. Even if your wrench touches the frame or the engine block or anything, nothing's gonna happen because the battery technically is not connect, connected to the system anymore. And then when you go to hook up the new battery, you want to do it, you want to hook up the positive first and then the negative. And I'll put a link down in the description uh, of a little video that I made showing uh, that procedure on a, um, on a little lawnmower. Now these multimeters have a lot of other functions too, but just checking voltage and continuity, man, it really helps you out on diagnosing problems and, and just figuring out what the issue is with whatever you're working on. And I use those two functions just almost pro probably daily. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If you'll hit that like button, but also most importantly, hit that subscribe button. And I'll have more videos like this coming soon. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.